Mrs. McKelvey, back with chapter two of The Princess and the Goblin. But before we get to our chapter, did you make yourself a booklet so that you can do the activities along with us? I hope that you did, but if you didn't, you still can do the activities on just a separate sheet of paper if you would like. Now, I'd like to see, were you able to figure out how old this story is? Do you remember the year it was written? 1872. That was a really long time ago. Over 100 years. Did you figure out exactly how many? That's right. It was 148 years ago. And I thought that was really amazing. It's a really old story. And something interesting that I found out when I was doing a little research about the story is I found out that a couple of my favorite authors reference this story in some of their writings. One of those authors is C.S. Lewis, who wrote The Chronicles of Narnia. Maybe you've read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, or you've seen the movie. Well, he talks about this story in one of his other books, a science fiction book. And then another of my favorite authors who mentions this book or the story is J.R.R. Tolkien. And Tolkien wrote the story of The Hobbit and the story of The Lord of the Rings, which is one of my family's favorites. Well, let's get to chapter two. It's called... The princess loses herself. I have said that the princess Irene was about eight years old when my story begins. And this is how it begins. One very wet day when the mountain was covered with mist, which was constantly gathering itself together into raindrops and pouring down on the roofs of the great old house whence it fell in a fringe of water from the eaves all around it. The princess could not, of course, go outside. She got very tired, so tired that even her toys could no longer amuse her. You would wonder at that if I had time to describe to you one half of the toys she had. But then you wouldn't have the toys themselves, and that makes all the difference. You can't get tired of a thing before you have it. It was a picture, though, worth seeing. The princess sitting in the nursery with the sky ceiling over her head and a great table covered with her toys. The princess was leaning with her back bowed into the back of the chair, her head hanging down and her hands in her lap very miserable, as she would say herself, not even knowing what she would like, except it were to go out and get thoroughly wet and catch a particularly nice cold and to have to go to bed and take gruel. The next moment after you see her sitting there, the nurse goes out of the room. Even that is a change and the princess wakes up a little and looks about her. Then she tumbles off her chair and runs out of the door. Not the same door the nurse went out of, but one which opened at the foot of a curious old stair of worm-eaten oak, which looked as if never a person had set a foot upon it. She had once before been up six steps, and that was sufficient reason in such a day as this for trying to find out what was at the top of it. Up and up she ran, such a long way it seemed to her, until she came to the top of the third flight. There she found the landing was in at the end of a long passage. Into this she ran. It was full of doors on each side. There were so many that she did not care to open any, but ran on to the end where she turned into another passage also full of doors. When she had turned twice more and still saw doors and only doors about her, she began to get frightened. It was so silent, and all those doors must hide rooms with nobody in them. That was dreadful to think of. 
Also, the rain made a great trampling noise on the roof. She turned and started at full speed, her little footsteps echoing through the sounds of the rain, back for the stairs and her safe nursery. So she thought, but she had gotten lost long ago. It doesn't follow that she was lost, though, because she had lost herself. She ran for some distance, turned several times, and then began to be very afraid. Very soon, she was sure that she had lost the way back. Rooms everywhere and no sign of the stair. Her little heart beat as fast as her little feet ran, and a lump of tears was growing in her throat. But she was too eager and perhaps too frightened to cry for some time. But at last, her hope failed her. Nothing but passages and doors everywhere. She threw herself on the floor and burst into a wailing cry of broken sobs. She did not cry for long, however, for she was as brave as could be expected for a princess of her age. So after a good cry, she got up and brushed the dust from her frock. Oh, what old dust it was. Then she wiped her eyes with her hands, for princesses don't always have their handkerchiefs in their pockets, any more than some other little girls I know of. Next, like a true princess, she resolved on going wisely to work to find her way back. She would walk through the passages and look in every direction for the stair. This she did, but without success. She went over the same ground again and again without knowing it, for the passages and the doors were all alike. At last, in a corner, through a half-open door, she did see a stair, but alas, it went the wrong way. Instead of going down, it went up. Frightened as she was, however, she could not help wishing to see where yet further the stair could lead. It was very narrow and so steep that she went up it on all fours like a four-legged creature on her hands and her feet. And that's the end of that chapter. So for your thinking challenge today, I'd like to challenge you to think about things that you could do on a rainy day. The princess got into this situation because she was bored with nothing to do on this rainy, rainy day. She had lost all interest in all of her toys. You may know what that's like because sometimes other people's toys seem better than the toys that are at your house because you've gotten used to them and you're tired of them. Well, I would like you to think about what are some things that you could do besides just playing with your toys. I'll tell you what goes at the top of my list. The very best thing that I love to do on a rainy day is to curl up with a good book. So I hope you've enjoyed this reading and I'll see you tomorrow for chapter three. Bye-bye.